All right, welcome everyone to the mess that is my life. It's Demise here with another slow, greater player run video. I'm not even, not even focused on the window. Sweet, awesome. Uh, when last we left off, we were playing. We finished the dungeon. We finished Orc, and then we started doing a Lair Branch. We we're having some interesting difficulties with the character, um, you know, due to the inability to kill some of the hotter, higher level Nagas, but. Uh, we did pick up this Demon Trident of Electrocution, which pretty much was amazing. And hopefully things will go better now, now that we're into this. Oh, we're actually also halfway through Layer 2, apparently. Oh, uh, sorry, Spider 2. Spider 2? Hmm, hmm. Snake 2. Sorry. Don't know what's what's come over me. Um. Anyway, uh, we, we we're trying to be a little bit optimal, trying to reduce the amount of damage we take from most things. Uh, the goal of this is to just kind of see how much, how many bonus resources I would, I got, I guess, compared to regular. Uh, this book looks interesting. It's a book of nothing really. Damn. Alright, well that's unlucky. Fair enough. Scroll. Uh, I'm gonna ID these. Okay, it's acquirement. Uh, for this character specifically, I think that acquiring, acquiring armor is really good. Our weapon is amazing already, and we already have pretty good jewelry, pretty much the best jewelry. Food is not relevant, evocable is not relevant, so I guess it has to be armor. Book of, uh, pair of embroidered gloves, the plus one gloves. Archery doesn't really mean much. Uh, I suppose it does make our blowgun a little bit better, but we don't really care that much about it. Uh, not at this stage anymore, anyway. Alright, so the Demon Trident should be, in theory, just absolutely crushing everything, and I'm hoping that that's reality. Uh, the Grey Draconian is actually probably a pretty decent color. Um, I just, I forgot to really talk about it, but Grey Draconians do get extra AC compared to regular Draconians. So I am quite a bit tankier than most of the other people in my level. Um, I'd have a lot less AC if I wasn't a great Draconian, put it that way. Uh, so I'm, I, there's a part of me that's thankful for it, that I have this um, ridiculous armor, compared to, like, again, compared to normal stuff, but we do want to train shields soon. I'm going to actually test how much the shields takes off. 4% fail, and then... Hang on, I'm going to bang on the fucking... Sorry about that. Um... I'm just trying really hard to, like, make sure that this thingo that's in the background isn't making too much noise. I'm not going to say anything, because it's not... I don't want to draw attention to it. You might hear it very quietly if you're paying attention, but I'm not going to... I'm not going to stress it. I will be banging on the wall every so often, so I apologize. Uh, it is... it is getting rowdy these days. Um, anyway. Continuing on, I need to eat some fucking food soon. Please don't make me starve. I am actually getting kind of hungry these days. I don't know what's this. Oh, I guess it's because I don't have any spell casting. Fair enough. I'm going to turn dodging off on in the logic that I've hit the marginal like returns, the diminishing marginal return spot. I haven't really seen my uh, evade climb that high after I started training dodge. It's honestly not that high at all. I think the 10 training that I got only gave me, like, what, 5 of 8 at most. So I think it's kind of over in terms of gains. So we'll just leave it there for now. Um, spell casting is pretty good to get. It'll make it so that some of our things are a little easier to cast. And it will also make our spell casting uh, less hunger, hungering, which is good. I put the shield on because I it doesn't seem to really affect anything other than animate dead, which is not a spell that I want to be using in combat that much anyway. So I think it's just fine to have the shield on. I do gain four extra shield for it, which arguably isn't worth it, but, uh, you know, it's it's four shield. It's not too bad. I'm willing to make the small, I guess, hit in swing delay and also in, um, uh, in spellcasting failure of a single spell to have four extra shield. It's not that, like, huge of a deal. Um, again, uh, like, there's a lot of optimizations that could be made, but without literally looking at the code, it's hard for me to tell which one's empirically better. And even then, even knowing the exact formula for all shield things, 
I wouldn't be able to like ascertain the marginal benefits or whatever um, of having the shield over the buckler compared to having an extra tiny amount of swing delay. Like I, I don't know. Even if even if you told me right now, like oh, uh, the extra four shield, which is what like a sixty percent increase or something, sixty six percent increase compared to the I don't know zero point one delay in weapon swing speed. Like, I couldn't tell you if I'd prefer to have 66% more shield or a 0.13% worth of improvement in terms of uh, damage. It's like, you can say whatever you want, I still won't know. Uh, the caravan is a very worthwhile place to go. I do have a little bit of money, which is kind of good, so I'm going to magic map for this. Thankfully, it's very close to me, um, so I'm not going to be like too stressed out. just going to go in and see what's up food I'm not gonna buy from there gloves of decks are an okay pickup but they're not like incredibly important so let's just think about the other stuff first uh there's no pole arms here there is a glowing broad axe but i don't think i'm very interested in that anymore um and a book of frost air and cantrips and minor magic minor magic has blink we can already afford it from another shop yep and that's cheaper actually uh the book of cantrips has apportation which is it's okay. Book of Air has Swiftness, which is, again, okay. And Book of Frost has Ozakubo's Armor, which is, again, pretty good. Um, the question is, can I afford both the Book of Frost and also the uh, the Gloves of Dex? And the answer is, I'm pretty sure no. The question is, am I willing to put points into making Ozakubo's good? I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it It's plus 8 AC, I think, so it's worth my time. Like, putting that on. Well, it's not plus 8, it's plus 6 right now, but that's pretty good for just standing still and fighting. I will have to eventually train a bit more charms or ice magic to make this a little bit more castable, but for the time being, I don't really care that much. If I do train charms, I'll be able to make all my other spells have less fail rate, but if I do train ice, I can kind of justify that by saying I'll go over to summoning to get ice beast, and then that'll transition me over to having... Mana Vipers, which is my end goal for spells. Having said that, I don't think it's worth it to go into Ice specifically for such, such a roundabout goal. Ice Beasts are like okay, but they're not going to be incredible by the time I get them online. So I think it's better instead for me to just train Charms and then eventually train Summoning and hopefully get that nice and ready. Uh, I still want to train Shields, I still want to train Invocations, I still want to train Spellcasting, and I think I still want to train Fighting. I'm pretty sure Fighting is good to have like the entire game i don't think it's like really reasonable to turn it off like i think it's that there's a case to be had that you should keep fighting on for the entire game um like and the literature is quite literally all of my games because i do that every single time um so like i know that there's good success in training fighting all the time it's very strong it's a decent thing to have regardless of how like you feel about your character you can have fighting training and you'll never feel bad about it so it's pretty good regardless i don't know if i want to turn it off for that reason alone arguably though there are some small gains to be had by not training fighting because i will be able to gain opportunity cost um so by giving up fighting so for example if that gives me if the next level of fighting gives me let's say five hp perhaps i could get uh, ice beasts, or I could get the um, the mana vipers with some of that exp. It just depends on how I don't know. I, I think it just depends on how much you value your hit points. And for someone like me, I value my hit points very highly, so that's why I normally keep my fighting high. Okay, we are near starving now. Can one of these guys come over here and fight? I don't want to buff too much because I want to eat, eat their food. Um, now I can buff. Now that I have food, I can decide to buff now. I don't know why I repeated myself, but yes, I did it. Alright, excellent. Okay, there's a bunch of enemies here. I'm just going to back off. There's no need to fight. No need to be impatient with my combat. Even if these are fairly mediocre enemies, I should still take the time to just kind of make sure they don't randomly take a consumable off if for no reason or 
randomly hurt me in any, in any way. There's no reason to stress over that kind of stuff. Just play optimally. Not even optimally, like just reasonably, I guess. And you should be okay. Alright, the Dagger of Electrocution is now completely worthless. I have a weapon that's far stronger than a Dagger of Electrocution. He has served me well, but it is time for him to leave. Okay. And note here that I'm still using tab. I'm not I'm not shying away from the ability to use tab. Tab is actually a very safe way to uh, complete combat. People will say, oh, I was tabbing too hard. It's kind of a nonsense statement, to be completely honest with you. Um, because tabbing stops you from fighting if you drop below a hit point threshold. Uh, what they should be saying is, I was fighting too hard. I was just direction mashing too hard. Because that's the only way you can technically die. Unless you have your tab meter at like 35% and then you just get one shot from there. But that's highly unlikely, I would say. Or it's highly unlikely if you're a rational person. I don't know if... I don't know what you guys are like, but, you know, I personally don't have my auto fight at like zero. I, I actually want to have some leeway when I fight. So, you know, tabbing, tabbing too hard is a little bit of a misnomer, I guess. Is that the way to use misnomer? I don't know. I think... I always get worried when I use words, because I'm like, hmm, what if I'm just wrong? What if I'm, a, what if I'm an idiot? I feel like I'm, I'm saying the right words, but you can never really tell with me. Oh, we're in Snake 4 already, holy fuck. That's incredible. We're, we're playing slow, and then we just forgot. Okay, I'm not gonna go into Snake 4, I'm gonna actually go to Shoals now. Uh, alright, I'm gonna bang. Sorry about that. I had to mute, I have to mute the audio every time I do that. Uh, so you don't hear this horrible, disgusting, blown-out noise. Uh, but I'm doing a service, guys. I'm, I'm really, I'm really trying hard. Okay, so let's talk a bit about Shoals and what makes this character significantly better at doing Shoals than you would expect. First of all, I can go into deep water if I need to, meaning that uh, people who try to mesmerize me are actually not going to be as effective. I can just kind of hit them. Secondly, I have Trident, a Trident, which lets me fight at range or semi-range, which is also good. Uh, it lets me poke over over stuff, which could be important for killing high-value targets like mesmerizers. Um, I can al I also have a shield, which will deflect a lot of uh, missiles, which can come from you know fawns or satyrs or uh, well, those other things. Um, the merfolk javelineers, merfolk aquamancers, etc. Uh, I also have a pretty decent resistance set, which means that steam balls and bolts of cold and whatnot won't hit me. Uh, and generally all around, I have spells which make me kind of strong. Like, not incredibly strong, but kind of strong. Uh, so, in theory, I should be pretty strong to hand- pretty well equipped to handle this. In practice, however, uh, this is not going to go nearly as well as I hoped it would. I'm gonna go for a cheeky abyss on one of those, uh, one of those mesmerizing ladies, the merfolk avatars. I kind of need to get rid of them if I want to have a good time over there. I'm gonna actually go and do dungeon 15 first. Uh, this will give the dungeon, sorry, the shoals to have a little bit of time to rest up and kind of, uh, like, it'll it'll just pass time in shoals, which will help me because. It might mean that my fight down there is a little less cramped. Right now, if I go downstairs in Shoals, uh, everything is right next to me. Everything knows exactly what I'm doing. They're all like, hey, it's that guy that we just saw. But, you know, if I leave for like 10 seconds, they'll be like, huh? Who's that? What? What's going on? Hello? And uh, that's what I'm going for here by wasting time in B15. Grabbing a bit of EXP. Just generally being an optimal streaker, by the way. I can now waste time and now I can go back. And ideally, this will make it so that I have a little bit of an easier time. Oh god, someone help. There we go. Alright, I don't want... I need to remember not to... Where is the shoals? Is it here? Yeah, okay. I need to remember to pre-buff before I go in. I'm also gonna... Oh wait, no. That doesn't work. Uh... A new spectral weapon here, and then also pick up Ozakubos. Kill the uh, mesmerizers at high priority, and then take out the rest, and then animate dead. 
Uh, I forgot to mention, again, because I'm being an idiot, uh, Anime Dead is incredibly good at dealing with shoals because all of your allies are really strong. Okay, so Gormand or Magic Regen. I think Gormand is actually better for this character. I just, I feel like I'm not really in that much need of MP. And having extra food is always nice, considering we've been burning through ours so much, even as a melee character. It also means that we don't have to train uh, really any spell casting anymore, because I no longer give a crap about spell hunger. It's not an issue anymore. So, with that in mind, I'm actually going to turn spell casting off. I'm going to learn um, Mana Viper, and then I'm also going to start training summonings on top of that. Okay. And then we can continue on with our merry way. Okay, I auto explored once, and that was only to prompt the game to eat food in in Gormand. That wasn't so much to do anything really. All right. Anyway, continuing on. Thankfully, my undead can walk through water. There's some dream sheep. Uh, I am drowsy, but that's okay. You can see here that I move diagonally left, uh, diagonally right, in order to prevent myself from being surrounded by dream sheep. Uh, their dream dust is actually irresistible and it's really annoying, but you can kind of get away from it by having a summon with you. Alright, there's Josephine. Do I want to fight the, uh, the Wraith first, or do I want to fight Josephine first? Josephine does more damage, but the Wraith can slow me. Well, since the Wraith already slowed me, I don't think it matters for me to fight the Wraith anymore. I'm going to go ahead and fight Josephine then. Alright, fine. Acceptable work. Alright. I am kind of straying away from the principle of concentric circles. I'm going to go back. I'm going to attempt to head back towards the upstairs instead of uh, exploring further out. Okay. These guys are really annoying, but hopefully I can just kind of take them out. Ozakubos is really helpful here. So they nerfed Ozakubos earlier uh, in the in the year to make it so that while it has a strong effect, still it has the same effect. Uh, it now breaks completely when you move, rather than slowing you for the duration of the spell. Uh, which makes it only good if you're willing to set up a fight where you're willing to kind of stand on your your uh, lost your area that you're Ozakuboing. Like, so, if you do want to use Ozakubos, you need to make sure that you're standing still, which means you need to be in a good position already. Okay, well, I'm bobbed now. Uh... I'm going to go ahead and try to abyss this guy. Okay, it didn't work. I'm going to try to paralyze. No, that's not going to work. Um, Alright. I, I feel like the magic potion is a bit unnecessary. And it probably doesn't mean anything. So I'm going to use blink instead. Oh, I can't even blink because I have no mana. Alright. Well... In that case, what would you guys do in this situation? No mana, you have bobs on you, so movement is tough. Um, and you can't really do much against all these ranged dudes. What would you guys have a go at? Uh, so the time is 1824. I need to just randomly write that on stuff. 1824. Okay. So what would you do? Um, Alright, so my answer would be to teleport... Or to drink Ambrosia and then drink Curing. Uh, so the question is, is one Ambrosia, one Curing worth more than one Teleport in this scenario? Or is it worth a Fear? Is Fear even good? Are these magic resistant dudes? Uh, doesn't look like they're that magic resistant. I could Fear, theoretically. Another option... Oh, one sec. Another option is to fog scroll, but I only have two fog scrolls, so it seems kind of bad. Um, well, given that I have ten teleports, I think I'm happy to just teleport once. It's like, I don't need to be that stressed about it. Okay, well, now we're in a significantly worse position. So, 1927. 1927 is the next uh, puzzle. So we teleported, and unfortunately for us, we were kept inside of the mesmerization. So how will we deal with this problem? Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, invisibility is a good option. Nope, I was fucking wrong. Uh, none of these guys can see... In all these guys can see in this. 
Or am I in water or something? Oh, I'm coroned. Never mind. Like, okay, none of these guys can see invis, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, none of them can actually see invis. I'm just coroned. That's unfortunate. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and fear scroll. That was a teleport. Mm. I fat fingered like two f uh, two actions per second. Incredible. Uh, I think this is fine. I'm no longer barbed, so that's good. I can move to the left. So what I'm trying to do here is close off the line of sight for a lot of enemies. Okay, so the enemies are now to the uh, uh, southeast of me, which means I can just kind of come over here, cast regen, make sure that I have a lot of HP in case they decide to come back, and now we can return to the fight. Okay, so we just got a little unlucky there with the Manticore situation, along with all those other things. I have a feeling that that was due to uh, suboptimal exploration. I feel like that wasn't a necessary play. So that's a bit disappointing for me. Um, yeah, okay. Fine. I guess I just have to accept that there are things that I'm not going to be able to do without 100% concentration. And, well, sorry, what I mean by that is, like, there are things that I will not be able to do while I'm recording because, like, it's very hard to record and also play. It does sound easy, but it's actually a very difficult thing to do, to be, like, anywhere near coherent, and also to have, um, good plays generally. I mean, normally it's not really visible because my, like, automatic level of play is pretty good, but because we're trying to make fully, like, optimized decisions, it's very difficult, indeed. Okay, so we hit max piety with Lagonu finally. That lets us brand a weapon with distortion. Now the question is, do I want to distort ever? And the answer is not really. Um, Anti-magic is not super important, though, having said that. Uh, hmm. Because if I, if I switch to anti-magic, I actually lose so much mana that I can't even use my Enter the Abyss. So it's kind of a shit plan, I guess, if that makes sense. So I don't think that I should be doing that. But I, at the same time, I just, I don't see the merit of having a distortion weapon on me. Uh, like, the question is just, is anti-magic, knowing that I'm going to lose all my mana, better than distortion, knowing that I'm going to eventually make myself want to die because of the frustration? <sighs> hmm... I mean, I might as well. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna switch over to anti magic. Let's be real. I'm not gonna switch over to it. It's just not worth it most of the time. Losing all my MP, which means losing all my spells and losing access to like half all my abilities, pretty much. It's just not really that worth. So I'm gonna go ahead and corrupt the anti magic demon trident, and that is going to make it good for killing certain enemies that are really annoying to deal with that for some reason or another I'm okay with randomly teleporting sometimes. So basically, it's a very niche weapon, even more so than anti-magic, but I don't know. <laughs> There's actually no, not that many upsides to it, so I don't know. Alright, I had to tab there because I have temporarily got a huge boost to my character due to the uh, four undead allies that I have. The allies act as a meat shield, they act as DPS, as I said in the last video. Um, they also act as, like, just generally bodyguards. And they're good bodyguards as well, because they're shoal level bodyguards. Um, Alright, so these guys have a Spear of Distortion somewhere. That's okay, though. I'm not really too fussed about that. As I have... Uh, the Gonu, I don't give a shit if he has a Spear of Distortion or anything. It's fine. Doesn't really hurt me. It's a minor inconvenience at most. Costing me a bit of piety, whatever. It's like, meh. Alright. Uh, identify Potion of Cancellation. That's pretty good. Cancellation can get rid of things like Corrosion, Marking, uh, Involuntary Teleport, Petrification, Slow. It's just pretty good in general um, if I'm able to use it. They are very rare though. I don't even know why they're that rare to be to be honest. I feel like they don't need to be that rare. 
Okay, so I'm happy to die on this hill. I'm gonna go ahead and sit here. Oh, no, they all left. Never mind. Well, maybe there just weren't that many dream sheep to begin with. Excuse me. I was gonna tell an off-tangent story. Uh, uh, like a completely off-topic story. Oh, that's right. Um, yeah, so today, like, I was... I was hungry. A hungry, hungry hippo. And, uh... I went to, like, an old mum-and-pop, like, milk bar-style shop. And I was like, oh, man, it's fucking... It's the city. This shit is gonna be so expensive. And it was. It was, like, for a takeaway box of stuff, it was, like, I think eight bucks or something? Eight, eight fifty or some shit like that? Which is... It's, just, it's a fair amount, but, like, it's not that bad. Like, eight fifty US... Uh, AUD is, like... It's not horrible, I guess. It's acceptable. Um, anyway. Uh, today, the, the guy, the old man... Who was like serving he like fucking went hard like I, I he put in like three scoops into the box I'm like oh okay that's how much I get that's pretty good that's not too bad and then he fucking shoved like four more scoops and he's like Ugh, put it in yes quick um his ill suit by the way I'm gonna stop so I can tell the story um but like he fucking put so much pasta slash salad in there that he couldn't fucking close the lid so he was like pushing down it. He couldn't close the lid. And I was like, dude, just take some out, man. It's okay. I don't want to take from your stock that much anyway. And he's like, no, I have to do this. And he fucking crammed the shit into the plastic box. It was like warped with how much food there was in there. And I was like, all right, I'm coming back next time. This fucking, this guy's awesome. Like he fucking is a badass. Like what the hell? Who's going to give away that much food? You know what I mean? Like, come on. It's the fucking city. We're expected to have like fuck all the food and enjoy it. You know what I mean? And pay top dollar for the privilege of eating, like, literally nothing. Meanwhile, the four cafes next to that person, uh, they sell, like, a, a, a beef, oh, sorry, not a beef, like a, uh, some kind of, like, a, a, a stew almost, like a pumpkin soup, for, like, six bucks a bowl. And, like, it's not a big bowl, it's, like, one of those little, like, shitty bowls. with, And they, they sell you, like, a loaf of bread, or, like, a small loaf of bread with it. I'm like... That's like six fifty or some shit like that. I'm like, damn, dude. This is the real city. Like, you just get used to the price. And then today, that guy was like, ooh, I'm gonna give you actual food. And I was like, what? You're gonna do that for me? I'm just some random stranger. I'm not your family. Come on now. That's fucked up. So yeah, that was a, that was a good day for me. That 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 base. Oh my god! I just realized you have a new tile, a fawn zombie. Ew. You're all bloody. That's gross. That's too vo That's too gory. I don't like it. This is, it's too much gore. And you, you're wearing some weird pants and your your legs are going one way, your arms going the other way. Ah, I don't know. What's going on here? It's alright. It's pretty good. Anyway, uh, there's a merfolk avatar here. I'm gonna try to cheeky cheeky banish the manticore because the last thing I want to do is be bobbed with a manticore. Uh, I need to kill the stupid mesmerized idiot. She's really trying hard to drown me. I can't even breathe. Yeah, like, why are you even trying to drown me? That's a waste of your time. I can't even breathe. I literally don't even. Like, that's not even a thing that I do. You know what I mean? Why are you even wasting your time? Okay, anyway. That was a good, that was a good part of my day today. Um, another part, like... Again, being off topic, uh, is that I was trying to relate, like, I, I'm, I think I'm gonna make a video about, like, what makes good players, uh, a good crawl player, in terms of, like, in terms of improvement, not so much to do with, like, what makes you skilled automatically, because that seems like a very slippery slope threshold to do, but something like, what do the good players do to become good, if that makes sense. Like, what would your, your strategy be what would your mindset be because there are a number of articles um both academic and like non-academic regarding player skill and skill development and stuff and it's something that is very interesting it has a lot of parallels to to a lot of games um i was trying to think of an of a saying that that meant effectively this like everything is connected and if they're not they're parallel so like you know everything is connected you can use everything um to to describe other things and if you can't then you can use analogies to do it so it's fine um 
but yeah, I, I always I always have taken a very like oh uh, all my skills in part A in game A are going to be transferable over to part B regardless of whether or not they are. I always take the concepts, I always think about it in a certain way. Um, so with crawl, like a lot of my learning pattern was influenced by League of Legends in the early days, and then as time went on, it became much more th uh, much more like fighting game oriented like chess oriented like I had a lot of different sources to learn from it's very interesting learning um, but I think that some people just don't realize that the mindset that they have is wrong or that there could be a better one that they have and some people just don't integrate that even if they do know that their mindset is pretty crap and I think it's like a pretty interesting learning opportunity if I make that video I just don't know exactly how I'm supposed to phrase it yet uh, so I'm in the, in the middle of making that video eventually. It'll probably come out like either next week or the week after, if I can remember it by next week. Um, if not, then I'll just forget about it. And we, we, like no one watched this video, it's fine. Like it doesn't matter. Um, it's inconsequential. No one's gonna be hanging on that video. It's fine. Um, but yeah, there's like so many interesting theories, both like, like I said, both in academics and in non-academics. Um, just a lot of cool shit, a lot of articles. I think there was an Overwatch article um, that someone posted on the Discord, or on a different Discord um, that I frequent, the Skullgirls one, uh, where they talk about Overwatch players and like the difference between a high tier and a low tier player. Um, and they use the analogy of like a, a fully red switchboard that, that lit up green whenever a situation was like checked off in your mind. And like the high tier, the difference between a high tier and a low tier player is that for the low tier player, the the checkboard remains, the switchboard remains like red for the majority of the time. But with a red, with a with a high tier player, the the switchboard's constantly turning more and more green over time, because they're quickly adding things to arsenals and they're quickly adopting precedents and stuff. Uh, so it's a it's a it's a very cool concept. It's very novel. I think it has a lot of merit. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll consider it in my own play, and uh, I did. In, in, in fighting games, not in, not in Crawl. And it became very useful very quickly. So I was very happy to have that kind of instantaneous effect. So I think doing something of that scale on this channel would be very helpful as well. To help inform players of, you know, alternative paths, ways to think about things. Um, it's probably too ambitious, but hey, whatever. We're ambitious people. We do what we want. Anyway, we're going to Snake now. We finished Shoals 3. We dipped into Shoals uh, 4 for a bit and then I got bored of it. So I'm coming back to Shoals 3 to finish this place off. We will at least need one rune to enter the vaults due to rune lock, so I think Snake will be pretty good. I could go for the second rune as well, the Shoals rune, but I feel like it might be kind of tough. I'll have to think about it a little bit more um, based on how I do with this area. I mean, like looking at this at a glance, we're actually doing very well already. The fact that we can fight this many guys with like literally no difficulty is promising, to say the least. We are level 17 and a half, which is pretty damn good for this part of the game. Ordinarily, you could be as low as level 15 um, when entering this area in a non-speedrun game. Like if you just got like kind of unlucky or something, or and, and you're doing this as your first rune. So like it, you know we're doing pretty good for ourselves. All right, summoning is at level five. We now have summon Mana Viper at 32%. I can also look up some summons and pick them up now, but I don't think I really want to other than summon butterflies. Canine Familiar is, is tempting, um, but I think at this point my Animate Dead does the same thing, but better. And at this stage, I don't think Canine Familiar is really that high of a damage boost. So I'm not gonna really bother with it. It's not a real point. But yeah, nowadays, because I've, I'm doing so much economics these days, Almost every decision I've been making and been analyzing has been framed uh, in terms of like cost and benefit and like game theory and such. It's very it's very interesting to think about. Um, one could probably make a fairly convincing argument that crawl can just be framed as an infinite sum game where you're actually supposed to know the information that about payoffs and make the like the optimal decision but the only reason why you don't is because you might because like you know crawl is actually predetermined in terms of ai and stuff they'll actually always do the same thing consistently because if they didn't it would be fucking disgusting 
um, like if, if, if their AI patterns weren't, were just like completely random, this game would be utterly unplayable. Or at least like twice as difficult because you wouldn't be able to accurately gauge what things are people are doing. It would make no sense half the time. Um, yeah, you could you could you could make a convincing argument that this game could be framed as a just a string of decisions um, that lead to a end result. There's a lot of like different ways to think about crawl to think about games in general, really. Like I said, I've always been a very in, uh, a person very interested in the underlying philosophies of dungeon crawl and in gaming generally like so much so that i feel like i'm more an analyst than i am an actual player half of the half of the time like i'm, I'm definitely on the theory crafting side of things despite like what i do despite what i've achieved i guess they're kind of ancillary to me like all the things that i've done which is why i don't really want to go for the world record and stuff anymore because holding on to the title doesn't mean as much anymore as long as I proved that it was, like, theoretically possible for me to do it, I was kind of happy with that. Hey, that's bullshit. How do you... Hmm. This guy's a cheater. Oh, wait, no. That's a different... What? Hang on. What? Yeah, what the fuck, man? How are you... Did he switch... He switched to the fucking obelisk without being distortion on wheel... Uh, affected. What the hell? That guy's fucking hacking. What a cheater. What a bullshit cheater. I call lies. I call... I call absolutely disgusting lies. Oh, where'd I go? I went home. I'm gonna auto explore now because I've basically explored the rest of the floor already. There's very few situations where I would actually be caught out by not auto exploring, um, and it would just take more time anyway. All right, excellent. Nice and free and easy rune. Very happy days. Yum. Give me that rune. Alright, let's grab a second rune, I guess. Got a bit of time. Oh, no we don't. Shit. It's 10 o'clock already. PM. And that's bad for me, because I actually have to go do my mid -sims, Or I have to study for them. There's a lot of content that I'm just not doing, because I'm lazy as shit. Like, I don't know. Even t Perhaps it's just because of the way I am as a person, but even, like, studying is just a game. It's nothing more than a game to me. Um, like it's all it's all about proving in theory if something is correct or possible and then once I'm past that point I don't care anymore like everything is about improvement but without with the least amount of effort uh, getting the max improvement and arguably crawl like this is the opposite of that this is the antithesis of that ideal because I'm actually putting a lot of effort in to get very marginal benefits because arguably this game would be won even if I played at top speed. Um, and there's like, you know, again, literature to indicate that I am indeed going to win this game if I play at top speed uh, on average. So like, you know, hot to argue otherwise, I guess. But, you know, there is the off chance that uh, I don't win the game if I play quickly. And I want to try to minimize that through... A supreme amount of effort like an absurd amount of effort this is way too much like this game is five hours long I literally haven't played a game this long in like three years I'm, I'm like almost certain now that I haven't won a game past five hours except for maybe the deep elf like tutorial videos that's it like yeah I'm like even 15 rooms and stuff none of them have ever hit above five hours like that's absurd half of them most of them don't even hit above four hours to give you like an idea of how much effort I put into this. Like if this was a tournament, I think I could have won at least three games in this time already, which is pretty crazy. But you know, it's worth it at this point because uh, I don't know. This is the only way I can think of that would help me build myself up from the ground, return myself to basics, if you will. I like how we have Gourmand and we're still nearly starving. That's the power of spellcasting for you. Uh, speaking of spellcasting, let's train Intelligence try to get some more spell hunger now. Alright, I'm happy to move here because there's nothing else on the screen that threatens me. Grab some of this food. Yummy yummy. Eat them up. Delicious. I want to sit in this corner here because it's good for me. 
I mean, arguably, like, this isn't optimal play anymore. I pretty much ditched the concept just because it's too fucking hard. If I was to play optimally, I'd probably play alone in a dark room um, by myself. Not talking, not listening to anything, just thinking. But, uh, you know, I feel, I feel like that would hit too many people. Hit the feels too hard, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't think that would be conducive to anything, really. No one wants to see someone just sit there and play. People want to actually hear people talk about playing the video game. <sighs> I don't know. Maybe I'm just bragging too much this game. Holy fucking shit. I'm gonna pull upstairs here. Uh, Dream Sheep are very dangerous dudes. Don't wanna fuck with them. If I can. Alright, now that I have some anime dead, I, I'm happy to fuck with them again. Happy to go and bully them. What's this one? One of Clouds? Excellent. That's a pretty good pickup. I think I've changed my, my mind on the Wand of Clouds. Or more accurately, I just have become enlightened. I think Wand of Clouds is probably one of the best, if not the best, uh, scroll, uh, wand in the game. Other than Digging, of course, which has a non-measurable utility. Um, like, Clouds are just so freaking good. Even at zero evo, which is where I usually, you know, consider my evocations. Because they just have so much, like potential to do like absurd amounts of damage like, if you get like fire clouds that shit's broken it's like conjure flame for free if it's mephitic cloud you can pretty much instant kill anything in the game if it's poison cloud same thing right like just depending on what cloud you get but all the clouds are good right there's there's no steam cloud low roll so you know you're almost always guaranteed to get at least something good like mephitic so keeping all that shit in mind it's actually really strong so I've actually tweaked my init file now to have it on auto pickup all the time. Pretty happy about it too. Uh, anyway, we've got two runes now. I'm going to leave the video here. Um, did I just alt tab out? Yep, I totally did. What is happening? Why, why am I not in control of my character? Hello? Hello? What? Alright, I'm just... I don't have control. Alright, I've lost control. And I'm not connected to the internet, maybe? I have no idea what's going on. Someone help me. Alright, well that's going to leave this train wreck of a video. Um, thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed me ramble about random bullshit that no one cares about. Because, uh, you know, that's what I like doing. It's my favorite type of video, where I just talk about fucking nothing for the entirety of the video. Uh, are you going to let me play, or am I going to just be like this for the whole time? Alright, well, just fuck that then. Until next time, everyone, I uh, hope you enjoyed, and uh, there will be no stream tomorrow, sadly, because I am uh, still studying for my mid -sems. There won't be a stream next san Saturday, but there will almost certainly be a stream on the Saturday after that, hopefully, because I think definitely within two weeks, I would say, uh, there will be, oh, sorry, three weeks. There will definitely be one on the third week, so be ready for that. Anyway, goodbye.